Commissioner, thank you very much. The other inductees, members that I can call, have, are my brothers now in a sense of the fraternity of the Hall of Fame and how proud I am to be here and be part of you. I, I, where do you start? Where can you possibly start to feel the emotion? Where can you possibly start to say the words that will express what has taken place in a man's life over a 20-year period and beyond? For me, it's the, it is the last beautiful flower and the perfect bouquet because the 20 years that I had as a professional athlete playing for those four wonderful teams and that 20-year period before my professional career began all came together for me in this induction in the Hall of Fame. How you would think, anyone would think that a young kid from Fresno, California would ever end up in Cooperstown, New York. You say, how in the world can it happen? And it can happen very easily when you have the kinds of friends, the kinds of people, the kinds of support, the kinds of education, and most importantly, the kinds of family that I've had in my 40 years of living, 47 years of living. Down in front of me, a young kid showed me how to wear a uniform one day. His name was Russ Scheidt. He started it for me. I showed up. I didn't know how to wear my socks. I didn't know how to wear my shirt. He showed me how to look like a ball player. He lived at the other end of the street, and that was the beginning of organized baseball for me. He went on from there through a group of individuals who were kind enough to come back to New York, come back to my home and help me celebrate this. About 30 or 35 people through the period of that 20-year period before my professional career started, touched my life and shared my life. And you don't know how proud I am that you took the time to come back and share this wonderful moment with me. The other people in your career, once you start a professional career that means so much to you and, and pass along the, the words of wisdom, the how-tos and the how-not-tos. A couple of guys here in, in the audience, one of my very best friends, Buddy Harrelson, the other one, one of my very best friends, Jerry Kuzman, Tommy Hume from the Cincinnati Reds, you've heard them all. A couple of people that are not here, Rube Walker, who was my pitching coach for 10 years. And for 10 years, I taught him everything I knew. <laughs> Ruby's sick and couldn't be here, but I talked to him on the phone, and I know in his heart that he is here. And much of the reason why I am able to stand here and talk to you today because of a 10-year association I had with a man named Rube Walker. With Bill Fisher, a pitching coach I had in Cincinnati. Dave Duncan, a pitching coach that I had when I was with the Chicago White Sox. I was very fortunate to win 311 games. And not many people in the wonderful history of the game of baseball that were able to go past 300. And you wonder why it happened? All you have to do is look at the individuals that were 60 feet 6 inches away from me through a 20-year career. A man very fortunate I was to have three people that were my basic catchers through a 20-year career, starting with Jerry Grody. Ten and a half years with the New York Mets. And when I was in Chicago, Carlton Fisk, who one day will be standing here himself. And to my right, one of my very best friends, the man I worked for for five and a half years, J.B., Johnny Bench. To each and every one of them, those of us that know the game of the game of baseball and the relationship that the catcher and the pitcher has, thank you, pal, very much. Thank you. To a guy like Buddy Harrelson, to a guy like Ozzie Guillen, to a guy like David Concepcion, to a guy that Ted Williams talks about, the scooter, Phil Rizzuto. For those of us that know of the essence of the game from the defensive standpoint is not necessarily the numbers of home runs and RBIs 
that you put on the road on the board, but the numbers that you keep off the board from the opposition standpoint, those guys that take away the base hit in the hole. You could be a fly on the wall and listen to Jim Palmer and me talk about pitching. And we talk to you about the defense up the middle and the importance the catchers have played throughout our careers. So a man that I guess was the, the base foundation, obviously, of, of a career that I, I thought of as an art form, and that's what I thought of as pitching. A man that gave me that foundation, gave me the work ethic, gave me the direction, a man that was always there as a pillar of strength to our entire family, my father, Charles Seaver. I was an excellent athlete when I was young, but when Dad and I played pepper in the backyard, I never got to hit. I might have been here as a 300 home run hun hitter for a, with us as a catcher, I don't know, but Dad, I, we spent many hours in the backyard playing pepper, playing pepper, playing pepper, and one of the reasons that I had such excellent control and was such a lousy hitter was that I did all the pitching and all the pitching and all the pitching. The groundwork of what it's all about, and it started when I was eight, nine, ten years old in my backyard. The members of my family, well, they are all over in front of me today, and they are far and wide, but the three of them that I must introduce. My two daughters, Sarah and Annie, 21 and 16 years old, God love you both. There cannot be a prouder father in all of America. God love you both. And Nancy Lynn Seaver, my wife of... <clears throat> when I talk of family, I have been, I have been very blessed. From the time I started, from the time I joined the major leagues from the time of my marriage, from the time that I stand here with this fraternity behind me, which now has become another part of my family. Family that means so much to you in different ways because they touch so many different parts of your life. Family which is the heart and the essence of the soul of our, of our very lives. And I, it's so great to have so many wonderful people in so many wonderful corners. And the only two people that are not here today, which I would want to be here, and I miss very much, the one guy that taught me what it was like to be a professional, how to really be a pro, Gil Hodges. <laughs> if all these other people taught me how to get here, and what to do when I got here. Gil Hodges told me how to be a pro and stay here. The most important man in my life from the pro pro professional standpoint of my career. And God, I know that you're letting Gil look down here today and I know that he is part of this. And the other person who is watching now, God love her, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> 